appreciate that thought and we're looking forward to hearing from Brother Noah tonight. So at this time, I'm going to ask Brother Noah to come on up and uh, he's going to preach for us. We're looking forward to the services tonight and we're thanking the Lord for the opportunity we had this morning and once again tonight. God bless you, Brother Noah. Amen, Brother. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Well, I want to thank the Lord for the privilege it's been to, for me to be here again this uh, year, I guess. Yeah. This, this is a new year for me to be here. Uh, I appreciate the singing. I appreciate that song right there because it has a little bearing on what I'm dealing with tonight. Um, when they uh, started singing that, I, my mind went back to junior camp where we had uh, 200 juniors. Uh, if you want to hear something that will thrill your, uh, th thrill your soul, you ought to hear 200 juniors sing that song. Yeah. Um, I have, uh, just, but don't get me crying here. Uh, I have sat on the pulpit and wept while they were singing it. J just so tremendous. Yeah. You, you never forget it, the, the way they sung it. This, their little hearts all in it and voices blending together and and uh, we, we do owe it all to him yeah, we do. We do. now tonight I, I'm going to include just a little bit of testimony in my message if you don't mind uh, because uh, this message that I'm preaching tonight the Lord gave it to me when I resigned the church that I pastored 44 years and uh, uh, you have to remember that I'm going on 80 years old so I'm not a little spring chicken anymore, all right? Uh, and, and the Lord gave this thought to me when I was reading the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. And so if you'll turn there with me to Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll start reading at verse number nine. Speaking about, or we'll start with verse number eight makes this statement, it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Now remember that word right there, he obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah received, uh, herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in, in, on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a, a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Now notice this verse. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Notice the word offered. The first instance that we read of his faith, he obeyed. Here he offers something. He offered up Isaac, uh, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Now, I, I want to make a comment on those two verses here before I get started. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, everybody's going to go through some trials in life. If you hadn't been through any, get ready, they're coming somewhere along the road. 
uh, and it said that, uh, that by faith when he was called to go out into a place which he should receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. The 17th verse said by faith when he was tried, he offered up Isaac. Now, verse number 17 would never have been possible had there not been the, the call of Abraham where he obeyed God. The, the, the taking of Isaac up on the mountain, which was several years later, would never have happened had he not by faith when he was called to go out into a country which he should receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Uh, in life, and I, I think everybody's aware of this, uh, in, in life, sometimes an event in your life will have a domino effect. Uh, God speaks to you about something and, uh, and, and you're left with the idea of can I be, obey this or should I just let this go? But if you don't obey him somewhere over here, an event that may have happened uh, will never come to pass because we didn't obey the God in the orig original thing. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I got saved, you know, uh, I, I didn't know that my salvation would result in a lot of things in my life that have happened over the years, the course of years, had it yeah. never happened to me if it hadn't been for the fact that I obeyed God in the, the most important thing in life and that was to get saved. Yeah. And so the Lord comes down and uh, calls Abraham. He said, Abraham, I want you to leave your, kindred, uh, your country. I want you to leave your kindred. Uh, I want you to leave your family. And I want you to go out in the place which you shall have to receive for an inheritance. And he up and obeyed that. That's in, uh, that, that is in uh, the, the uh, uh, 12th chapter of the book of Genesis. You, all, you know those first two or three verses there. And so that, uh, that act of obeying that call of God, several years later, uh, the, uh, God speaks again and said, Abraham, I'd like to have your son. Now, if he, he had something back here to look back on, I'm glad I've got something to look back on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bro, brother uh, uh, Frank that there told you that I got saved up there in Old Lachlan Baptist Church and uh, Dr. John Rollins was pastor then and just a 13-year-old boy, country boy. Uh, and uh, so for some reason or another, dad came up here and got a job. Uh, Woohoo. This is going to get touching, brother. That's okay. I can't rub this eye either if it gets to water because I got, got cataract surgery in it. But in, anyway, I, I'll get through it. Y'all pray for me. Never would I have thought 1957, 13-year-old boy, that I'd be up here tonight. But if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here. It, it, it had a boomerang effect upon me yeah. uh, and, and j this is part of my testimony and, and then I'll get to my message here of course this is part of the message too so I hope you don't mind that uh, and so uh, a little event happened there in uh, 1957 that my dad went out and uh, I wanted something to read and he went out and found a little book in a bookstore somewhere around Cincinnati on Adonai Judson. I read that story of Adonai Judson, missionary to Burma. You ought to read the story of his life. When he went to Burma, there were no Christians. When he left, it was only a Christian nation in that region. He gave his life there. And I'd read that book, and boy, it touched my heart. Yeah. I'd, I, it'd get a hold of me. And, uh, uh, and little did I know then that God was planting a seed using the Bible uh, as the main book and that book as a springboard into something else in my life. And I, I got to saying, boy, I, I'd like to serve God like that. I wish, I wish God would use me like he, he used him. And, it, and I couldn't get away from it. And, and so it, it began to work upon me. And, and I'm, I'm talking about a 13-year-old boy. And so people would come up to me and say, Brother Noah, what are you going to do with your life? And I'd say, I'm going to be a missionary. Little did I know that an event that happened back here would have a 
far-reaching effect upon my life. And so uh, I got in those teenage years and got down in Kentucky and got involved in stuff and thought I was going to be a big farmer and thing like that. And, uh, and that was pushed way back yonder in the background. But God didn't forget. God didn't forget. I got in a meeting kind of like this and somebody posed a question, what are you going to do for Jesus? And all of a sudden there, that thing popped up again. So I went out there and found me a wife and got married, thought that would take care of everything. It didn't. That thought was still there. What are you going to do with your life? Are you going to let God use you? Are you going to obey God or not? And so it began to work on me. And uh, we got in a revival in uh, uh, 1950, 1964, there towards August of 64. And uh, boy, that thing was working on me bad. I, I, I was kind of getting my heart right back with God. And, and that thing that happened back there in 1957 began to spring up over here more and more. And I, I, I thought about preaching and uh, I thought about giving my life to the Lord. And the devil comes and says, you can't do that. You, you got married and went out here and bought all this machinery and cattle. And you, you can't do that. You'd have to give all that up. And uh, now hold on. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, if you, you hold, this, this is word testimony. And I'm, and I'm glorifying God in it. I'm not taking any credit for this because I didn't have anything to do with my call. I didn't have anything to do with my salvation that was of the Lord. And, and so I got all these cows and milk cows and things like that. And, and uh, every time I'd go to milk, it'd come up, why don't you go preach? And I'd say, Lord, I can't go preach. I'm milking a bunch of cows. Got a bunch of tractors and things and I'm going to be a farmer. But this is all working together now. Yeah. I have nothing to do with it. And finally, it got so desperate that the Lord said, are you going to obey me? Uh, and I, I looked at what I had, and here, here's, a, what, here's what the devil uh, will tell you. You got too much to give up. You can't give up enough. Right. He gave it all. Yes. Right. He gave it all. And, and, if, and, and if I could use an illustration here, this is in another sermon I preach it. This is, a, since I'm chasing a rabbit here anyway, uh, I was reading there uh, in reflection on this, on, uh, on Mary, Mary that broke open the box and poured out the, the perfume upon the feet of Jesus. And uh, I was, I was uh, and, and this kind of how it happened to me, uh, I, I, I got over here and, and I, uh, I had a comb in my pocket like this. And I said, I came and laid that comb at the altar and said, Lord, I'll give that to you. And, and the Lord said, well, that didn't cost you but a dollar. That's not much. So I reach up in my pocket and I pull my knife out. I had a little cheap knife and I laid that there and that, Lord, that cost two dollars. But that didn't satisfy me. I pulled my good knife out. That cost fifty dollars. <laughs> Say, Lord, I I, I lay that. And the Lord said, That's not enough. And so I got my car keys and laid them down. And said, Lord, I'd give you my car. And I wasn't satisfied with that. So I I I, I reach in my pocket or at the house and I get my deed to the house and lay it down. Say, Lord, I'll give that for you to you. I give all that stuff. That's all I got to give. You got one more thing? <laughs> you got one more thing. And finally, that night I went down to the altar and said, Lord, I'd give me. Yes. Would you take me? That's all I had to give him. Rest of it I owed for it. And so I got up off of that milk stool, milk of the cow. I, you've probably heard me tell this, but it goes with my message. I got off that milking stool, tears streaming down my face, 
went into that little old three-room house me and the wife was living in, the little baby laying in there in the crib. I was a weeping like a baby. And my wife said, what's the matter with you? Do you, that cow kick you or what? And I said, no, honey, the Lord's called me to preach. And I'm going to have to preach. Yes. I'm going to sell everything I've got and go to Bible college. Amen. And what happened back there in 1957 was still working in 1964. Yeah. All right, still working. still working. I'm not at the end of it yet. Right. Now you say, what has that got to do with Abraham? Well, I, I, I thought... I, I have really the faith of Abraham, and I believe you do if you're saved. Uh, when he was tempted, I'm glad you got a King James Bible because the Bible interprets, interprets that later on. It's tried. When Abraham was tried, he offered up Isaac. Uh, and he, when he was called, he obeyed. And, and so I'd like to spend just a little bit of time here tonight on the faith of Abraham and show you how it applies to my life and how it applies to your life. Uh, first of all, it's good to see somebody as great as Abraham be tried. I can't kick and complain when God tries me. I'm no, no better than Abraham. In fact, I wouldn't be where I'm at without Abraham. Uh, there's things in the Bible about Abraham that I wanna emphasize here if I could for just a little while. Romans 4.1, Abraham our father. Abraham is our father, little f. They're not God the father, he's our father. Fa father of what? Uh, verse 11 says, the father of all them that believe. If you ever believed, you got the same faith as Abraham. There's not two kinds of faith. Right, right. And you say, where did that faith come from? It comes from the word of God. God said to Abraham, won't you go out and leave everything behind? He obeyed God. Won't you give your son? Won't you offer your son? He obeyed God, yeah. offered up his son. Uh, Romans 4, 12 says uh, he's the father of the circumcision. Mm -hmm. That means us Gentiles. Uh, the, 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 my, there's all kinds of ways to get in here. Uh, he's the father uh, he, in verse number 12b, he's our father. Now this is all about the faith of Abraham. That's what I'm preaching on tonight. And, and using a little bit of my testimony. Uh, verse 16, he's the father of us all. Man, what a man this fellow is. He's our father. He's a father of many nations. In fact, God promised him there in, in uh, Genesis chapter 12, I'll make the father of many nations out of you. And he, he's done that. Don't, don't you think that Israel is the only nation that came out of his loins? Right, right, right. There's other nations that sprung from Abraham. Yeah. Then we go over to the book of Genesis, chapter number 15. Abraham uh, had a promise from God that he would give him a seed and he's getting older. Uh, and, and so he approaches God and says, will, will it be my servant, uh, Eliezer? And God said, no, out of your own loins, loins there's gonna come a seed. In verse chapter 15 uh, and verse number six, there's a verse, so Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Y'all remember that verse? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the first time the word believe is used in the Bible. Isn't that a blessing? about faith. I, 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 I believed in 1957, same kind of faith. I had to step out and accept the promise of God that he would save me. So the, the first time the word counted is used, it was counted to him for righteousness. And when we get saved, God takes the righteousness of his son Jesus and accounts it over on our account. Amen. Uh, on, on my ledger book tonight in heaven, my sins have been covered. Yes. Because someone else took my place on the cross of Calvary and died for my sin, and I took his righteousness and he took my sin. Accounted. Yes. Amen. Amen, I like that word. Yes. I'm glad the old account is settled long ago. Amen. It also mentions the word righteousness for the first time. 
the fellow that is the father of our faith was the first one that, uh, that was uh, mentioned about the righteousness of God being accounted to him. It's like, I, it's like I did it, like you did it. Well, I just count that to you. I, I, God's got enough righteousness. He said, I count that to you. Yeah. Chapter 22 of the book of Genesis. Abraham, take thy son Isaac. I've just read that tonight, so, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. But in verse number one, it's the first time the word tempt is used in the Bible of Abraham. Verse number two, the word lovest. First time. Verse number five, worship. Isaac, let's go up the mountain and we'll worship a while. We know he was going to offer his son, but Abraham, the Bible said, was going to worship. Now hold on to that thought. Verse number 18, first time the word obeyed. Now, here's my point and I'll get to my message. Y'all still with me? Yeah. All right, so stick with me a little bit longer here. If all of these things that, that he tells us in Romans chapter four, he's the father of, and all of these words in Genesis chapter 15 and Genesis chapter 22 are the first time the words are used about, uh, about Abraham, uh, then we ought to listen to somebody like that. We ought to pay attention to his life. We ought to see what goes on in his life. Uh, and he is called the father of all of us to bl that believe. And so tonight, all of us that are saved, we're walking in the steps of faith that Abraham walked in. Right. I'm looking for a city. Amen. 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 In fact, I've got a place reserved there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've never seen the city and I've never seen my room yet, but I know it's a mansion. Yes. Praise God for that. Yeah. We're walking in the steps of Abraham. Right. Uh, and, and what a great man he was. Now, here, here's my message tonight. What a great man, yet, yet still tried. He had a course and he's reacting to it. Number one, this, this is what faith does. This is important. Sometimes faith makes you step into the unknown. I didn't know where this over here was leading to. Never, I had no idea where it was leading to. It leads you into steps that are, that are really unknown to you. My faith and my steps and my belief in God and my marriage and my things of that nature produced, produced uh, three daughters. Three daughters, all of them saved. And I remember I wanted to hear their testimony and so this is back when people ate at home for dinner. I, I come home from church and I'd say, now girls, I'll tell you what I'm going, I, I preached a funeral of a boy that died of a drug overdose and his mother cried le, uh, le, weeping on my shoulder and said, do you, did, uh, do you think my boy was saved? And I said, I don't know, ma'am. Did you ever ask him? And she said, that's something that we don't, never got around to talking about. So I got on a conviction about that and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my girls know where God saved me at. Yeah. And if I ever get them up there, I'm gonna take them spot. But, but I told them about when I got saved. And next Sunday, I told them where my, uh, my wife got saved, their mama. And she got, got to tell her testimony and, and it was good. In fact, uh, we kind of wasn't in a big hurry to eat after that. And I said to Regina, my oldest one, I said, honey, I wanna hear your testimony. And she got to testifying about where God saved her and, and she got to weeping up on it. And, and, and it's, it's, good, it's getting good around the dinner table. Yeah. And then my, my uh, middle daughter, Angie, I was telling about when she got saved. And it's getting better and better all the time. Then my baby, Rachel, plays her piano now. I was telling her, I, I remember when she got saved. She was playing the piano down at camp. She was 17 years old. She'd made a profession back there when she was a little thing. And uh, I, I looked up there at the piano and I saw this 
flood of tears streaming down her. And I saw her get up from playing a song, get off the piano, and I knew the minute she got up, she was coming to get saved. And she got saved that night. Amen. Now, this back here, yeah. this back here, yeah. is having results all the way down yes. through here. All at different times. Everybody still with me? Yes. Now, you, you sometimes have to step to the unknown. He obeyed not knowing where he was going. He knew he was looking for a city, but he didn't know where it's at right then. Do you remember when you had to take a step of faith and you didn't know what's going to ha happen or how it's going to turn out. Yes. Everybody's called to do it. Yeah. Everybody's called to do it. Well, now, now, Brother Broughton, you surrendered. You, you got saved, surrendered to preach. You went to Bible college, and and how'd you get there? I, I don't know. I didn't have nothing. I piled everything I had into fifty-five Ford Fairlane with a baby's uh, bassinet in the back and the rest of my clothes and our clothes and headed off to Springfield, Missouri and didn't have a house, didn't have a job, uh, didn't have an apartment, didn't know how we were going to get by, but I knew God was leading me. Yes. You don't have to answer all the questions. Right. God doesn't have to answer. God doesn't have to turn all the light on at one time. Right. And, and, and so uh, I, I can kind of process that now. Uh, and you say, well, wh why did you get this sermon about the time you surrendered to preach? Because uh, Christmas Day, going on 80 years of age, I had to step out again. Brother, I don't know where it leads to. Yeah. But I know this. The God, when I was an 18-year-old boy surrendering to preach and stepping out, is the same God that's leading me down. Yes, amen. I don't know what the future holds for me, but I know as I go down this path right here, I can lean back on what happened over there. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody getting this? Yes. You sometimes have to step out in the in unknown. And, and so God doesn't set the dates for us. Well, here on such, such a day as this is gonna happen, such, such a day you get this, such, such. No, God let me get down to the very bottom. I didn't even have enough money to stay in Springfield. I was coming home and if God didn't give me a job, I was going to have to drop out of school. And I got back up there after Christmas break and had a note in my, my mailbox. said, go down to MFA Milling Company. They got a job waiting for you. So I got to stay in school graduated because God was a step ahead of me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm, yes. getting, I'm getting all happy here again. Yes. Amen. You need to sometimes re rehearse what God's done for you. Yes, you do. He, sometimes the directions, God, the, the directions are up to God. The dates are up to God. Uh, sometimes the, the, the duration of something you're going through is up to God. Right. But we have to step out by faith to get to where those things are. Number two, sometimes you have to sacrifice that which you love. Say, so did, you, did, you, uh, did you love the farm? I, I still like the farm. I never got farming out of my system. I just don't do it anymore. I, I, I love farmers. I go around farmers as much as I can because they're feeding me. Yeah, right. I'm eating at their work. Uh, I, don't ever get down on farmers because our nation would sink without farmers. Yeah, right. and, and so I see those old fellas out there uh, plowing and, and, and disking and sowing seed and reaping harvest. I say, Lord bless that man because he's, a, he's the heart of our nation. You take farmers and old country folks out of our nation, our, our, our whole nation would be right on the brink of hell because it already is nearly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about people that labor and work. 
uh, and, and sometimes you have to give up something that you love. Uh, Genesis 22, Abraham, take now, don't delay on this, take now. If something's to be done for God, you ought to be in a hurry about it because time is short. Take now, no, no delay here, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, Ishmael doesn't count here. You take Isaac, not Ishmael. You take Isaac, whom thou lovest, and offer him there. We may be called to, uh, upon to sacrifice that which we cherish and love and hold dear to reach a higher cause. Amen. Yeah. No cause so high as his. If I had a thousand lives to give, uh, they'd not be enough. Uh, God, God will never ask you to give up something that he won't give you something better. Isn't that a blessing? I had a woman and uh, her husband, their house burnt down and about six months later, she said, Brother Broughton said, you never believe this, said we got more now than we had when they had the house and it's better stuff than we had before it burnt down. I said, that's just like God. Amen. He'll not be a debtor to anybody. Right. Amen. Uh, and, and, and so if, if he asks you to give up an occupation or uh, something of that nature, uh, the, the Lord knows what he's doing. Yeah. He, uh, think about this, he feeds the sparrows every morning. Yes. Cattle on a thousand hills are his. Yes but he may ask you to give up something that you cherish. Number, th number three, you may have to suffer some disappointments. Now get this, he had to separate from Lot. Lot was his, uh, his kinfolks, he had to separate from Lot. It got so bad, of course Lot was living on uh, Abraham's coattails anyway, and it got so bad, Lot was blessed because of Abraham. He was judged because he left Abraham. Uh, but, but sometimes there's disappointments in life. So he separates from Lot and Lot picks the best part and, and he thinks he's getting the best of good old Abraham. Uh, and Abraham said to Lot, you look up wherever you want to go and and uh, I'll take the rest. And so a lot looked out and saw the well-watered plains of Jordan for cattle and sheep and things of that nature. And he chose the well-watered plains of Jordan. And after he was gone, God said, Abraham, come out here. He said, I want you to look to the north and the south and the east and the west and wherever your foot lands, it's yours. And he gave him, he gave him lands that are unoccupied by Israelites tonight. Yeah. They're still fighting over it. Yeah. Uh, but he had, to, he had to suffer some disappointments. And then there's the matter of Hagar. Mm. Where'd you get Hagar at? He got her down in Egypt. She was an Egyptian. He never, he never lived over this because out of Hagar comes Ishmael, right. who's the arch enemy of Israel. And sometimes he was disappointed in his failures. Anybody ever here, uh, here have a failure? Yeah. Abraham got down to Egypt and, uh, uh, and he told Sarah, which was his sister, half sister. He said, you tell Pharaoh that you're my sister. You're a beautiful lady to look upon and he may desire you. So he, he, resorted, to, he resorted to something underhanded. And uh, he got rebuked by, uh, uh, he, he got rebuked by Pharaoh because of that lapse of judgment. You may suffer some disappointments. Number four, you have to see beyond the present. Amen. Up, up, up the hill he goes. Now we're, we're way over here now. We're way over here. He obeyed over there. Now he's obeyed here again in chapter number 22. He goes up the hill. God has said, Abraham, give me your son. 
tried him, tested him, tempted him. So he gets, he gets Isaac, he gets the wood, the fire, uh, and they head up towards Mount Moriah. And his son says, Dad, we got the wood and we got the fire and we got the knife, and, but where's the sacrifice? One of the great statements of the Bible, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Amen. So he, he builds the altar, he puts his son upon it, draws back the knife, the angel of the Lord comes down, withholds him, and he said, Abraham, I know now that you'll not withhold the dearest thing in the world to you. Look behind you. And he looked behind and there's a ram caught in a thicket. And he took that ram and slew it and put it upon the altar uh, in the place of Isaac. And out of, this, out of this event came this word, Jehovah Jireh. The Jehovah Jireh. I, I, I like that word because it says, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Yeah. All right, now listen to this. These all died in faith that I've read about, not having received the promises, having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. When he, when he offered Isaac upon the altar and he looked behind him, he saw what God was talking about. Now, I'm kind of living in that spot tonight. You're living in that spot. I do not know what tomorrow holds, but I've seen enough from here to here to keep me going on. Yes, amen. And I don't regret a mile that I've traveled with the Lord. Amen, amen. And in the process of that time, I've seen so many things happen. I wouldn't have time tonight to tell you uh, you know, pastoring all these years and preaching revivals and things of that nature and camp and things. I, I couldn't begin to tell you the, the things that I've seen God uh, provide. In the mount of the Lord it shall be, uh, shall be seen. Uh, I, I, laid, uh, I laid my mom and dad in the grave and, and I bent over them and I said, I'll see you again soon. Yeah. <laughs> Say, how do you know that, Brother Broughton? Because I got the Bible. I got the promises of God. Amen. I've got I've got the faith of Abraham. Yes. Amen. Uh, you say where that happened, to Abraham? Well, I, I'm going to go up there and kill my son. But don't worry, son. We'll come back down. Yeah. We'll, we'll be we'll be back in three days. Yeah. And they were. Uh, and my Lord uh, has promised me that He's coming back for me. Yeah. And and I've had enough happen there, and had enough happen down through there that I, He kept His word that I believe He'll keep His last promise. Yes. Uh, I'll see you again. Uh, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I believe that. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I've got it in my heart. I've never been to heaven, but I've got a lot of heaven in me. Praise the Lord. In the, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And so here comes Abraham down the mountain, his son Isaac with him, and they're rejoicing uh, because they'd seen God do something stupendous never been done before, never been asked of somebody before. Uh, and, and he said, uh, boy, we've seen God work. Yeah. Now, let me close with this. He's still working. Yes. I, 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 I don't know what in the world's gonna happen to me, but I don't, I don't spend a minute worrying about it. Well, what, what happens when you're old? I am old. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I, I I, I, I told my daughter, I said, these old people have to watch this COVID stuff. And she said, well, Dad, you're, you're in that same category. I mean, that old, old category, but uh, maybe I'll live as long as Brother Frank there has lived. But uh, anyway, I know one thing, God will hold up his end. Yes, He's always, always held up his always. end. Uh, and if you got faith in him to die, it will turn out good. Yes. It will turn out good. Do y'all believe that? Amen. I believe that yes. tonight. Father, I pray that uh, our